The woman you're about to hear about, when I met her, I didn't like her at all. I didn't not like her at all. Now, here's the way my story goes. I got promoted to become an executive at a Fortune 500 company. Now, some of you, that's the shock value right there. You're like, this clown was an executive at a Fortune 500 company? Well, there was two ways to make it. Have a relative in senior management. That's always good for a promotion. <clears throat> or be gifted at... I had no relatives. <laughs> but I was gifted. Well, I get promoted to senior management. Now I'm sitting in front of four HR professionals. That's right, HR people, four of them. I actually said to them, I said, it takes four of you to give me my executive orientation. One of them, poker face, that's what I called her. Poker face looks at me and she says, you are now an executive. You need to act like one, walk like one, talk like one, and dress like one. You are the reason we have certain HR training. I caught up with that later, thought, oh, yeah, okay. Because yeah. when they have a line, I'm the kind of guy that like dangles my foot over it. I don't cross it, but I'm, you know, I just like to. Well, we're talking there, and all of a sudden, Poker Face opened her mouth again. Here's what Poker Face said. She said, there's one more thing that concerns us. I said, and of course, I'm all ears. I said, hey, what, do you, what concerns you? She said, you'll have your own secretary. Now, I shouldn't have said what I said immediately after that. How many of you out here can confess with me? You've had those moments where you've said something and later you're like, bring it back, please. I did not mean to say that. Like, like last night, some of you, I know some of you, you're just over there, how you doing? Oh, yeah. Hey, let me tell you, give you a little secret. When you're walking around hammered, take your badge off. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Well, I've had that happen, seriously. I'm like, oh, you're with Old Dominion. Yes, I am. Cooks. <laughs> what do you do for the company? Or what did you do for the company? <laughs> she said, you'll have your own secretary. And exactly at that moment, it slipped out. She said, you'll have your own secretary. And I said, giddy up. Oh, don't you sit there as a hypocrite. At least I'm honest. I was young and I was single. I was raising a couple of boys, but I was young and single. And when you're young and single and you want a secretary and you're about to get a secretary, you have a vision. <laughs> now, my vision for a secretary and the company's vision, we were kind of far apart. <laughs> I was looking for a female under the age of 28 named Buffy. Typing skills were optional. <laughs> Be careful what you want. They gave me Margaret. 37 years in the company. <laughs> they assigned me a woman who's been in the company longer than I've been on the earth. And I said to a friend of mine, how would you handle this? He said, I'll tell you first thing you need to do. First day you meet this woman. And he wasn't politically correct. Here's what he said. First day you meet this battle axe, you let her know you're the boss. You let her know you're in charge. You're the big man on campus. He said, put the hammer down. How many think that worked out well? <laughs> the day I walked into that building, now you're going to find out something about me that some of you don't know. I have a good friend of mine who's a neighbor of mine. Well, every time I'd say this to him, he'd say, well, they, they probably don't believe you. No, no. What you see is what you get, on stage, off stage. I'm just who I am. But there's one thing about me, not real pretentious about a whole lot of things. And back then, just like today, I don't wear a lot of ties. You know, matter of fact, I didn't have a tie until I found one, but they told me to power up, power walk, power talk, power dress. I thought, I'll play your game. I got that blue suit, you know, the one you wear to funerals and weddings? The one you go in the closet and the shoulders, you're like, <laughs> like blowing the dust off the shoulders. And then I pulled out my designer dress shirt. I had a designer dress shirt, $135. That's right. Some of you guys are like, well, that, that's pretentious. No, it's not. I bought that thing at a yard sale for 50 cents. <laughs> it had somebody else's initials, but it was my size. That's why God made Sharpies. I took those initials and just wrote those things out of there, and I had my own. If 
found my tie. It was a Christmas tie. It was a ho-ho tie. I thought in the distance, the person had bad eyes, they'll think it's a print pattern. They won't see little Santa Claus hats. So I was all powered up. I'm walking in the building that morning, dust blowing off my shoulders. My tie's flipping in the wind. And Donna, the receptionist, I loved Donna. Donna was sweet and kind. She was the first impression you'd get walking in that building. She's like, hey, how are you today? Hey, how are you? And she'd say to me, hey, how are the boys? That morning, the new executive was taking no prisoners, including the receptionist. And here's what I said. Donna, my secretary arrives this morning. Intimidated her, right? Uh Uh-uh. Here's what she said to me. I know. (laughs) She said, I like your Christmas tie. I said, you give this woman a message for me when she hits this building. You tell her there's a new sheriff in town. I walked away and I heard her say, okay, deputy. (laughs) How many ever had those days you feel like, wait a minute, I thought the, forget it. Well, I'm down in my office and I'm a perfectionist. What's a perfectionist? What do we do? We have a certain law and order of our life. You non-perfectionist, where are you at? Yeah. Let me ask this, where's my perfectionist? Where are you at? Come on, unite, I love you, love you ma'am, love you sir, love you, yes. See, if you're not a perfectionist, you don't understand the way we think, but let me give you a little hint. When you come into our office, keep your hands, why do you have to touch something? Why? You've never seen a clicker? See, you pick this up and then what we have to do is because it's colored and it has printing on it, we gotta make sure that we set it down. And if you're carrying crap, Let me define crap. If it's not mine, it's crap. (laughs) I don't want it in my office, on my chair, on my desk, in my wastebasket. Take it with you. I tell you that for what happens next. A woman who's been in the company for 37 years has done her homework on me. She found out I was a perfectionist. Six months after she's with me, she tells me that the manila photo that she put on my desk was a prop. It had nothing in it. She knew when she put it on my desk, it would drive me insane. (laughs) There's a woman at my door. I look up and I said, you must be Margaret. She looked at me, soft-spoken and very respectful, and she said, Mr. Gilliland, in this executive setting as your executive secretary, my preference would be for you to refer to me as Mrs. Shannon. I'll refer to you as Mr. Gilliland. How does that sit with you? You ever had a person try to get your goat? Oh, yeah. You know how people get your goat? They find your goat. Yeah, see, if they can't find your goat, they can't get your goat. And you know the whole context of what I'm going to talk about is enjoying the ride. Let me tell you something. If you want to enjoy the ride... Here's something I'm going to tell you you need to do. Hide your goat. Because if you don't, they'll find it and do what Margaret did. They'll find your goat, untie your goat, and ride your goat down the hall. And for some of you that are lost, that's a metaphor. It's a fun group. I got people going, goats, where is he headed with this? 